Hello, and welcome to Brazil with Kylie, the fourth instalment in this glorious series of geographical documentaries. In this program, we'll be looking at Brazil's rise from its current NIC status, from zero to hero, the positive and negative effects of this growth, its employment and industrial changes, tourism in Brazil, how the recession has affected Brazil, trade in Brazil, a few interviews with some experts, and of course, lots of exciting statistical data. Brazil, a country boasting crime, <laughs> inequality, and culture. <laughs> but we'll be starting today's programme a little differently than usual. Over to our reporters, Dale and Daniel, for a short history of Brazil's rise. Thank you, Kylie. We will now take a moment to give you, the lucky viewer, a brief glimpse of the history of Brazil, the gem of the South American continent. Brazil as a country was discovered by the Portuguese in 1500, when it consisted of 3 million natives in roughly 2,000 tribes. In 1530, it was divided into captaincies, similar to the Lord Lieutenants of the Shires of England, but on a larger scale. In 1822, it became a separate kingdom, although under the rule of the Portuguese royal family. After the abolition of slavery in 1889, vested interests engineered a coup to replace the liberal empire with a more easily controlled republic. In 1823, the total population had risen to 4 million. This had risen to 7.7 .7 million in 1854. In 1872, there were 9.9 .9 million, which then rose to around about 14.5 million by 1887. The 1940s, however, saw a rise of up to 41 million, and then up to 146 million by the 1990s. The present population of Brazil is approximately 191 million. In 1870, an open border policy was adopted, and until 1953, there were about 5 million economic migrants. There are more Lebanese people in Brazil than there are in Lebanon. Slavery was an important element of the economy, with banderines forcing natives into slavery where they would work on sugar plantations. The literacy rate is presently 88%, a rise of 68% since 1889. Now to speak about Sao Paulo, I would like to introduce Sir Dr. Gerald McAlroy, GSD, KBG. Thank you. Sao Paulo is a state on the southeastern coast of Brazil. It was first settled in 1532 and brought under direct royal control in 1548. The city itself was founded by a Jesuit mission on 25th of January 1554. It was a community of 1,500 citizens and 150 households by 1600. The economy produced little save some agricultural goods. In 1822, at the time of independence, Sao Paulo was a town of only 25,000 people and 400 houses. By 1828, an opera house, a botanical gardens and newspaper had all opened. In 1842, an attempted revolution was suppressed, with negative consequences for the citizens. However, by the late 1860s, the first railway started to open. In the 1880s, the coffee craze started to take a hold, and Sao Paulo, being a port, was well placed to take advantage. During the 1890s, the immigrants encouraged the plantations to replace the slaves made up 55% of the population. By 1901, 51% of exports were coffee, and in 1920, Sao Paulo became the second largest city. In 1934, the city university opened and is still regarded as the premier South American university. During 1889 to the 1940s, industrial development of Sao Paulo was gradual and inward looking. Initially closely associated with agriculture, but grew into textile manufacturing. There was a reduction of imports and government policies on trade tariffs which, which contributed to this. By 1945 it had become the largest industrial centre in South America and by 1958 controlled 55% of Brazil's industrial output. Thank you Dr Sir Gerald. We will now bring in Sir Jeremy Jackson. Hello there Sir. Jeremy Jobson Jackson Jim. Afternoon. So, a few questions just to introduce you to our viewers. Uh, Hello. What's, what's your name and where did you come from? Uh, so, Jeremy Jackson, Jim ACB, DCG, KGCE. Founder of the British Army back in 1832. That was a good day, I can tell you. I'm also the leading historian <coughs> on Brazil. So, Jim Jack Jobson James. Tell me, you've been all over the world. Indeed I have. Why do you like Brazil so much? I don't, I hate the damn place. Full of Brazilians. 
Not like England, full of English people. Why do you have a PhD XC in it? Well, you know, when you're in the Navy, you have to go places, unfortunately. You can't just stay in England like we all would like to. Yes, yes, we You whippersnappers yes, going yes, everywhere. Yes. Oh, whatever next. Yes. But Jim Jackson Johnson James. Indeed. The real reason why I brought you here and paid you obscene amounts of money. I thank uh, you. It's just because uh, we're doing a documentary on Brazil, you see. Yeah, good idea. And uh, we just wanted to know a bit about the history of uh, Alagoas. Oh, right. Well, it it was first settled in uh, 16. Well, no, it was more like the 1530s that the Portuguese went over there, established a couple of uh, little settlements, but it wasn't properly done until a bit later. And the Dutch, of course, tried to conquer it, but they were kicked out in 1646. Good war, that was. Um, after that, the Portuguese retook it as well, yes. James Jackson, Jim. What were you saying about the Dutch just then? Well, they were kicked out in 1646 after the colonial wars. They'd oh. gone there for the sugar and things like that. Excuse me, but, excuse um, me. Rude little man. Snapper. Anyway, as I was saying, in 1570, the north of the area was explored by the Portuguese and they set up a good few sugar plantations. Mm. You see, the area itself is actually quite an interesting geography. It's beach, geography. mountain with rainforest, now gone, scrublands, which you can't do anything with. So really, the only place you can do something is on the um, rainforest, the Atlantic rainforest. And that's where they built all their sugar plantations. Now, um, if we look here, you can see that uh, in 1839, the capital was moved to the coast, a place called Amacio, because the previous place, Alagoas, was inland. And obviously, if you're on the coast, you need a port, port. where you can get trade overseas. Port. Do you know what I mean? You do, good. So obviously, that's something else. There's, there's not really much else that happens. I mean, tobacco, sugar, cotton, and things like that were all farmed. Tobacco and sugar are the two main exports there today, as well as tourism, interestingly. But, um, you know, these things, they're very different. The, cha the state hasn't really had that much change in the last 400 years. Thank you for your time, Doctor. Are you, are you still going? Or? No, that was it. Thank you for your time, Doctor. Speak up. Thank you for your time, Doctor. Glad to hear it. <laughs> John Jackson Jimson. Um, well, I've been Daniel Robertson. You've been great. Uh, back to you, Kylie. Um, I was saying the studio, but no, it's not in the studio, is it? No. Uh, back, back, back to you, Kylie. Back to you, Kylie. With, uh, with the report. With the report on Brazil. Game over.